All right, we are here with Brooke Bennett for the Robots and Aliens Gallery Talk at M Galleries. Hi, Brooke. Hi. Hey. So thank you, everybody, for being here, and please feel free to comment online. We'll get to all your questions and comments, you know, but uh, yes. So, uh, so do you just want to jump into a little bit about your background, Brooke? Sure. I grew up in New Jersey, and uh, I have been... I would say obsessed, maybe, um, with color, mm -hmm. design, and I would agree. Uh, performance, uh, really art forms across the board, lighting, um, filmmaking, performance, dance especially, but one of the most things that I've, one of the biggest things I've been really passionate about is creating aliens mm. since I was very little, and uh, creating robots has come a little bit later, um, and that's what I'm looking to share with you guys today. Oh, terrific. Yeah, that, I remember going to your studio for the first time and seeing these these uh, characters, and you know, it's wonderful to see them in, in this context as well. So, uh, yeah, if you want to share a little bit about your uh, what's behind you here. Okay, cool. So, this is a body of work that really um, began a couple of years ago, and, well, that's not true. <laughs> uh, it began a lot, much decades ago, but the w yeah. works that you're seeing here are from the last couple of years, and um, they're over, I don't know if you can s sure. swing yep. this way, mm -hmm. and um, can see some of these pieces. Yeah, the other side. And they're really reflective of my life and what I'm going through and how I'm feeling and uh, how I'm processing mm -hmm. what's happening in my life and I feel like they're really an expression of my vulnerability and how I'm processing dark feelings mm -hmm. and a lot of times um, in order to process those dark feelings I use really bright colors um, to help my mood because I really believe strongly in color therapy that it really works it helps to shift the mood and another thing that I do when I'm working on whatever work I'm working on is I, I combine breath work and yoga mm -hmm. to help me to relax uh, because I really believe that the best art that we can create as creators is when we are relaxed mm -hmm. and when there's so much tension in the world and in our lives and uh, so it's been a real key component for for creating is mm -hmm. finding ways to relax yeah well, it seems like that you have your characters in these yogic poses, right? Yeah, and, you know, some of the, them are in meditative. yoga poses. And some of them, it's also a lot about relationships because mm. relationships and communication are key in life. And one of the things that I have been really working on in the last, you know, many years, but mm -hmm. particularly five, is learning how to better express myself and my needs mm -hmm. and learning how to communicate that to uh, people in my life mm -hmm. and um, so many of the the drawings have two people mm -hmm. or like a few people come back around. Um, yeah and um, here's one of one of my favorites <laughs> uh, with the stripes and polka dots and it's sort of this you know the drug the is it a, the duality mm -hmm. that's happening within us mm. and uh, the, the light and the dark and understanding that we have to embrace all of it because it's part of us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, I go for the bright colors because it helps me to feel better mm -hmm. inside. So. Yeah. So, so being that there, do you feel like that you're more robot or more alien? Totally, way more alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a really long so, time, yeah. I thought I was an alien. <laughs> I really did. Like I was for sure of it growing up as a kid, and um, I finally accepted it. I don't even know. Maybe a few years ago. I don't know. Um, so then, but, who's the robot? 
Uh, the robot is actually a collaborator, Eric Cardinal, mm. um, who I've been dating for since the spring, and he really um, has been a huge inspiration. And actually, it was the awareness today that uh, the 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 front um, the front of the gallery is is actually the two of us. You know, I'm the alien; mm. he's the robot, mm. and. Um, so again, and it's that relationship, the relationships and how, how also robots are very relevant in our time yeah, right now. Sure. Um, and how, again, communication, robots communicating with each other and there's all kinds of alien activity going on as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know if that answers that question. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you, uh, so the, do you think, uh, do you think there is a, a what's the, the contrasting between the robot and alien? Like, what is it that, why, how is it a duality? You know, like what's, what's uh, the, what are the characteristics of the robot and what are characteristics of the alien? I don't actually know if there is a duality. I kind of imagine them, uh, together that they work mm. together. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, I just, it's very future. Yeah. To me, it's the future. It's it's the awareness that we are not alone on this planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are there are extraterrestrials that are way smarter than us, mm. and um, or and using uh, intelligence types of intelligence that I'm not sure we'll ever tap into, but or that we could tap into, um, and. You know, robots, I've, the research and understanding that I've come to, like, uh, the awareness of robots now, uh, the ones that are working in mm -hmm. a Tesla yeah, or right, right. in different car companies and how intelligent they are, or people that are building robots that are now creating their own language mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they've needed to shut that shit down <laughs> because the robots are taking over yes so um i i i really feel like it's it's about intelligence um communication and um not necessarily not necessarily duality but i'm sure i'm sure there is i haven't really thought about that well i feel like honest. that with your sculptures i think those are the best illustrative of like the combination of the two okay, so yeah. but, but this one in particular is a robot alien, you know? <laughs> oh, well, I see like, what like, you're I saying. Like these, it's got I feel the like antenna. these. Yeah, I feel like these all are are that uh, that duality kind of put together, you know? Or you're, what you're saying, you know, that about there's not really duality. It's just that they're, uh, you know, one being, but a. Uh, but yeah, so I think you kind of hybridized this oh, idea okay. in this work. I hadn't thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. I, it's always interesting to catch somebody else's perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what about these three robots that are paper mache on mm -hmm. um, body forms, upcycled body forms, um, they were a labor of love mm -hmm. and a um, it was a process of seeing, you know, how to construct. It was really the first time I'd ever built any kind of sculpture. Right. Uh, and figuring out how to make them come alive um, and do it in a way that they would balance, uh, be balanced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it was a process. Yeah, and is it a, the... And the also it was trying to figure out, so what I originally had wanted to do um, was became, I had to find other ways to do it. So for example, like this, this particular one over here, mm -hmm. I really wanted her face to go inwards and I wanted to have mirrors so that when you looked in her face, you saw your own face. Mm -hmm. And um, which has been kind of cool because I manifested it in a different way when you walk in the front door of M Galleries. You actually can you can <laughs> right. see your, your face, face, is, your in, face her is in her square there. eye, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's just adjusting with what you have and mm -hmm. working with what working with what you got. Yeah, well, 
the, and the the material I like the 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 way you use the uh, it's almost like you're creating this like paper circuitry you know with the the grids and the uh, you know the the crossword puzzles and the newspaper you know it's like this analog yes you know. that was the intention and every single analog piece circuitry. of paper really was placed with intention um, and every time I didn't do that I had to rip it off <laughs> so um, yeah and then these yeah and these are the, the 2D were versions of that. the bursts mm -hmm. of, of robot thoughts mm -hmm. ah, and I love that robot it thoughts. was it, the inspiration was the matrix and how you have all those you know the numbers that come down when you're digitally downloading things mm. because I really we're, we're constantly downloading all the time unless we're sleeping yeah, and right, um, right, right. so how do we download things and stay sane <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was a process of you know staying sane downloading uh, uh, bits you know what what are we downloading and that's what we're, information we're, yeah. we're downloading information mm -hmm. but what do we choose to keep is really a choice mm -hmm. so um, and this one, the big one is called uh, Abstract Robot, right? Abstract Robot, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like using the, uh, the the use of information, you know, that that's a, a, a very clever way of illustrating information, you know, in an analog way with the newspaper. Right. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yeah. Th that was the intention. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And you have this... One in the corner yes. here. Yes, so this, this is, is the Baby Bot. Baby Bot. This is Baby Bot, one of the collaborations with Eric Cardinal. And um, he reminds me of Beaker <laughs> <laughs> from The Muppets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it was really um, when we, how he came together was pretty much right after we had finished Boo Bot, yeah. who's in the window. And uh, there's something, you know, when you have that creative flow going and then all of a sudden something just, you know, you like get an idea, like he wasn't, we weren't planning for this baby bot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, an, that's a great line. And so all of a sudden he, um, Eric started, I was like, well, we had these extra pieces and he started putting them together. And he made the, the face, and I was like, wait a minute. And I took the face mm. and put it inside this box, and I was like, what? And then um, he grabbed this and he this piece, and I as soon as I took it, I just placed it. I was like, this is exactly where it needs to be. And, and he came together. And that was another thing for learning how to collaborate with somebody. Mm. I had never done that on a sculpture mm -hmm. and it's really interesting when you have your own vision to there's a certain amount of control that mm. comes with that and how do you um, compromise mm. and so that was that was an experience there was some yelling there was <laughs> some like okay we need to relax um, just that awareness mm -hmm. that uh, the process happens and when you're working with somebody you have to find a way to come to a middle ground mm. and it's not necessarily all gonna be go your way how do you find a way to you know have an eyebrow a certain way and your eyebrow can be this way and how can those eyebrows fit together and um, so that really happened on the face of Boo bot that's mm -hmm. in the window um, and then this was just a real easy flow mm -hmm. once we were once you're in that flow it flows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to say that but <laughs> yeah so that's the story on baby bot mm -hmm. and yeah and it's interesting seeing that one being a little more minimal yeah and know. he's a bust and a bust yeah so which is kind of reminded me of the armor that people would wear back in the medieval times mm -hmm. and um and how this piece you know became his shoulders mm -hmm. anyway he's a cute little guy <laughs> well speaking of a uh, collaboration so can you share a little of your influences you know um, yeah absolutely yeah. um i would say uh 
Um, yeah, let's start with the, with the, the art influences. Yeah, okay. Um, some of the, I'm really inspired by, I've been inspired by pop art. Mm -hmm. um, I've been inspired by um, a lot of writers and uh, I have been inspired by a lot of dancers. Mm -hmm. So creating movement, uh, finding ways to create movement within my work, even though it's not moving, mm -hmm. um, like Martha Graham, mm -hmm. huge influence. Mm -hmm. um, um, who, oh, what is his name? Um, How to Draw a Bunny. Oh, uh, Ray Johnson? Ray Johnson, yes. one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Uh, as I space out on his name. <laughs> uh, no, he's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And do you feel like there's a, there are, uh, like, how much of, like, the dance is in this? I, mean, I could see that in the sculptures, for sure. Yeah. You know, this movement in that sculpture. And, and so we'll let, maybe we can go back to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Do you want to look at them from behind? Yeah, right, Maybe? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you did. Yeah, the dimensionality of it. So what are your uh, your non-art influences? Uh, non-art influences yeah. are Tesla, <laughs> uh, um, really wicked smart people. Mm -hmm. There are so many of them, but also really progressive health uh, people um. in the field of health, healing, and wellness, mm -hmm. and. Uh, because I, I really feel strongly about in in order for to be even able to create the mind controls the body for sure. and so taking care of my mind has been a real priority mm. in order to create so how and do you do that how do i do it um yeah. i do it with kundalini yoga i do it with food and balance you know doing my best to balance what i eat um food from the earth Hmm. And um, exercise, walking, getting out in fresh air, get taking vitamin D if I'm not able to get vitamin D or it's too cold in hmm. Vermont. Hmm. <laughs> and um, you know, quality time with for quality friendships, um, making time for the things that I love to do, hmm. and. Um, well, since you recently moved to Vermont, do you yeah. feel like do you feel like that? How much of, of has Vermont influenced the the way you think about art making? There's a lot of really inspiring people up there. Mm -hmm. I've only really gotten to get like a festival of fools was the first time that I ever really got to see people out of their houses because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it was really like a fresh just seeing the getting to experience people and their kooky outfits and a variety of, of characters, for <laughs> sure, mm -hmm. um, has been really inspiring. And meeting other artists that are just passionate about what they're doing. And um, it's, been, it's been an interesting place to be. There's a lot of young people there with all the colleges, so mm. that's also another aspect. But because of COVID, um, it was. It's been a bit strange mm -hmm. to to create a community. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you want to talk about Buddha? Yeah. So this is Buddha. <laughs> this is um, uh, an older painting from 2013, and a mixed media piece. And he was created uh, during a transformational time mm -hmm. and a semi dark time but you know stay in the light mm. time and um, yeah he's cool <laughs> he's a cool guy so is that Buddha meditating under the tree yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah stay centered stay focused yeah. on where you want to go mm. yeah and then this one is alien pods which is was me created a little bit before that mm. these are birth um, birth pods with aliens in their sacks. Yeah, speaking of the Matrix, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of. And 
And then after that one, we've got um, this monster going for this alien. <laughs> and uh, and these are all older pieces, right? Yeah, this so, one's so from all also like a, 2013. <clears throat> So you have this uh, which was kind of a rough period, thing. but it, it's also a real perfect example of using bright colors to move through a dark time mm -hmm. in my life and express darkness. I kind of I didn't actually like showing this because I wanted to always be in like be in the light and be happy. And um, one of the things that I've learned as I've gotten older and have more experience is how important it is to really embrace that mm -hmm. and to embrace the, those feelings of, of anger, of, of, de of despair. And in order to move up the emotional scale and to feel better and is that accepting that, mm -hmm. accepting that as part of who I am right. and part of being human. Because I'm not an alien. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Right. So uh, you just gave away the ending. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is. Um, it's just part of the process. So uh -huh. I and I, I, it's been fun to bring bring sort of the darker, some of the darker ones out. Mm -hmm. There's a few of them. Um, so, and then we've got one more uh, mixed media piece yeah, from, from the older series. Yeah. From the older series. And uh, this one is twins, mm. and it was um, it was kind of ex it was an experiment playing with uh, a different bunch of different mediums, because primarily the majority of the alien work was always uh, pens and pencil. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you, what is the, uh, I'm, I'm interested in a relationship from the older work to the newer work. You know, do you feel like that you've, uh, what, what directions do you think you've been taking? Is this like, a, are these springboards to what we're seeing per, for the current stuff? Or is it something you've, are they like one-offs in your mind? These, mm -hmm. are these one-offs mm -hmm. yeah. in my mind? Yeah. Uh, these are one-offs in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely think that every single bit of work is always a springboard for what's to come. Yeah. And, uh. I get bored <laughs> so and everything I want everything to like what's new what have I learned to create something new what what is going to inspire me uh, today for tomorrow mm -hmm. you know and um, how do I keep flowing with the river how do mm -hmm. I keep flowing with the stream of creativity uh, because there's always new mediums to learn and new processes. And every time you meet a new artist, mm. that's freaking awesome. Yeah, for sure. So you get a chance to get inspired by somebody and go, you know, checking out other art shows and just getting inspiration um, from all different areas. It, it, I feel like it all gets infused into what comes next. Mm -hmm. So. And also that includes traveling and like experiencing new places and going into nature and spending time alone and contemplating and meditating and like going inward mm -hmm. as well as going outward. It's like that gathering and then also that inner work. And then I think it comes to can come mm -hmm. together. So indeed. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Brooke? Yep. Please. Um. When was the first time you ever drawn aliens and robots? Mm. Uh, first time I ever drew aliens and robots, I think I was like this big. I would say <laughs> seven or eight. And yeah. How motivated you to do this? Mm. Uh, good question. I felt a strong connection with aliens. Um, I wasn't really drawing robots at the time so much, but I really felt a strong connection with aliens, and I think it was feeling really like out of place mm -hmm. growing up and sort of just being feeling a little different yeah maybe also with the way that i i was thinking <laughs> so all right thank you for your question yeah thank you <laughs> yeah any other uh questions for book any curiosities about the work well brooke thank you so much a really tremendous talk 
Um, and uh, yeah, well, uh, will this show be up uh, all month, all November? Yeah, so the show will be up uh, for the month of November. And I'm honored to be in M Galleries. Thank you, Frank. Yes, thank you. And um, uh, come by if you feel inspired. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, or send your questions if you have any. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll be answering all of them. Thank you all so right, much, cool. Brooke. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.